Today, the Biden administration rolled out its most aggressive effort yet to combat climate change with tougher emissions limits for cars and trucks. But a number of challenges remain, including the cost of electric cars, the batteries, and how to charge them on the road. William Brangham has our report on the administration's latest move. Cleaner cars, cleaner air, as quickly as possible. That's the stated goal of the Environmental Protection Agency's new proposed emission standards for tailpipes. If enacted, these standards could mean that in less than 10 years, as many as two out of every three new vehicles sold in America would be all electric. It's the nation's most ambitious effort yet to cut the greenhouse gas emissions that are driving climate change. The administration argues that this shift to zero emissions vehicles would help the U.S. meet its pledge to cut overall emissions in half by 2030. EPA Administrator Michael Regan laid out the plan this morning. This is historic news for our children. It's historic news for our climate. It's historic news for our future. The EPA set forth two sets of proposed rules today, one governing cars and light trucks, the second for heavier vehicles like buses and trailer trucks. If enacted, the EPA says emissions from those small and medium vehicles would drop by 44 to 56 percent. As a father of a nine-year-old, I can assure you that there's no greater priority for me than protecting the health and well-being of our children, ensuring that they have a safe, healthy, and reliable future. Transportation is the largest source of America's greenhouse gas emissions, accounting for around 27 percent of the U.S.'s carbon pollution. Supporters say this move by the EPA is a welcome addition in the fight to curb the worst impacts of climate change. It's a dream come true for those of us who know we need to decarbonize our, our society and certainly our cars and trucks. Fred Krupp is president of the Environmental Defense Fund. EPA has the authority to reduce the amount of tailpipe pollution. And when you reduce it enough, uh, the way to meet that is through zero emitting vehicles like electric cars. And, and that's the mechanism. If a company can do it with a hydrogen fuel cell or an electric vehicle, they're allowed to do that. But in reality, the electric vehicle is the answer that not only Tesla, but GM, Ford, Stellantis have all chosen as the best way to clean up that tailpipe. This shift would require automakers to dramatically ramp up production of electric vehicles. Last year, EVs were roughly 5.8 percent of new cars sold in the U.S. Right now, they're at about 7 percent. But EPA Administrator Regan said the industry is ready for this surge. Listen, over the last two years, over $120 billion of private sector investment in electric vehicles and, and batteries. Uh, I, I believe it because when I look at the projections uh, that many in the automobile industry have made, uh, this is the future. Uh, the consumer demand is there, the markets are enabling it, the technologies are enabling it. The effort to transition to electric cars is already underway in this country. And almost all automakers have rolled out new electric models, with a few even pledging to go fully carbon neutral soon. But still, there are some real challenges ahead on the road to an all-electric future. One is about the batteries for these cars. The minerals currently needed for them, lithium, nickel, cobalt, and others, are primarily produced in China, and some are mined in dangerous, inhumane conditions in parts of Africa. But there are other issues. John Bazella is the president of the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, which represents car makers. When you talk to consumers, what you often hear is, how far will this go on a charge and where can I charge it? And so that raises two immediate questions. Do we have sufficient charging infrastructure? Um, are there high-speed chargers available uh, on interstates between uh, metropolitan areas so that I can take a longer trip as opposed to just moving three or four miles around my, my hometown? There are roughly 53,000 charging stations currently in the U.S., compared to triple that number of gas stations. President Biden has pledged construction of 500,000 new charging stations nationwide by 2030 
and set aside over $7 billion in the 2021 infrastructure law to pay for it. Charging stations are becoming increasingly ubiquitous. In the last few days, 7-Eleven announced that they will have charging stations at all their locations. You'll be able to drink a Slurpee while you're charging your car. And Walmart, which already has 1,300 charging stations, has announced they're going to build thousands more at every single Walmart and Sam's Club. Another impediment is cost. The current average EV costs about $65,000. That's roughly $17,000 more than the average gas-powered car. Even with the federal tax credit of $7,500, which not all EVs qualify for, plus the longer-term savings of never having to buy gas, that initial sticker shock has kept some buyers away. Right now, um, the average transaction price of an electric vehicle is, um, is substantially higher than the average transaction price of an internal combustion engine vehicle. Will that change over time? Of course it will. Because these EPA rules are an expansion of existing statutes, analysts believe they'll likely be challenged in the courts. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham.